husband, his name is Wayne. Wayne was on a business trip uh, in Chicago, and he was coming back from the trip, coming home. He went to the Philadelphia airport, waiting for a commuter flight to bring him back to Wilkes-Barre, and um, he started to slur his words, and he started to feel confused. Um, he picked up the phone, and he called me, and I thought, you wouldn't be drinking, would you? And he said, no. But he said, something's wrong. And I recognized immediately that he was having a stroke. So um, I told him to give the telephone to the closest person sitting by him, which he did. We called uh, 911. They came in. They transported him to a hospital uh, where they told him in the emergency room that he was having a TIA. If this is a stroke, this is the kind you want to have. You're going to be fine. Doctor called me up. I was already on my way to Philadelphia. Told me not to worry about anything, that he was going to be fine. We, this was all in the evening. And we arrived in Philadelphia about, <clears throat> I'm going to say, 3 o'clock in the morning. And when I walked in the room at the hospital, I could see something else was happening. It was very plain to see. I went out and got the nurse. She came back in. They did the test, you know, the see his strength, and she said he's stroking out again. They called the doctor. They then transported him up to Thomas Jefferson Hospital in the stroke trauma unit, where um, he seemed to be fine. He, he was diagnosed then with aphasia. He could read. He could write. He gave me all kind of instructions because he could not speak, but he could read or write, and he was writing everything down call my office and tell them X, Y, and Z. Everything was wonderful. They told me, come back to the hospital in the morning, pick him up, he's going to John Hines for outpatient therapy. I stayed in a hotel in Philadelphia. When I arrived back at the hospital to pick him up, which was about maybe seven o'clock in the morning, the bed was gone and the, the room was just empty. And along with that, if, if you're familiar with large hospitals in big cities, there's doctors walking the halls all the time, and there's uh, physician's assistants, and there's always somebody you can get to ask a medical question. So they were waiting for me to come into the hospital, and they closed the door behind me. They told me that he had taken a very, very bad stroke through the night, about 2 o'clock in the morning, and that he was completely paralyzed on one side of his body, and that he couldn't function. He couldn't talk. He couldn't even think. When I saw him, he was they had him in an intensive care unit, and um, he didn't know me. He didn't know his name. He didn't know anything. He couldn't even recognize the picture of a nurse or a doctor. Um, I'm like, what happened? Through the night, I guess, um, he threw another clot, which was about this big, and it was to the left side of his brain. Um, it did all kind of cognitive uh, damage. He's, um, he's pretty bad, they told me. So they started therapy immediately. Um, they couldn't get too much out of him. The, the, the speech therapist came in, of course, physical therapy came in. And what happened was they kept him there for a few days, and as soon as they knew that he could be transported, we put him in an ambulance, and we brought him to John Hines, where the evaluation was to me, don't expect too much. He's probably going to need to stay in a nursing home for a long time, or depending on if he can take care of him or not. Um, it was it was a slow, slow hill decline. Uh, when he his therapy was over, at John Hines, I did take him home. Uh, we had our family room changed over, we made it like a hospital. How long was he at John Hines? He was at John Hines for three weeks, and that's with the insurance the way it is now. They even, they they push the limit. They really push the limit to allow him to even be there three weeks. I think now you can probably get two weeks, maybe. But um, when the insurance company says you're out, you're out no matter what, and family then has to choose: do you want to put him in a nursing home for the rest of his rehab? Or do you want to try to do it? I just made the decision. I would try my best. We had two floors in our house. So, of course, I had to do everything 
I could to make the first floor convenient because he was walking with a walker and I was holding him up with the walker. So it, it was really hard. He couldn't go up steps. He couldn't do anything. I had to bathe him. I had to feed him. I had to do everything for him, which we did. And we brought therapists in uh, to the home. We brought physical and speech therapy into the home. And um, would you like me to elaborate on my feelings of the therapist that came into the home? <laughs> did not have good, good speech or good physical. We had people telling me, not gonna work, not gonna work. Um, he couldn't write or do anything with his right hand, so she told me, we're gonna train him with his left hand. And I thought, okay, I guess, because you wanna make him functional, so um, she would leave, and I could see that he was starting to pick things up and do this. I could see what he was doing. Um, when she would leave, I would put a fork or a knife in his hand or a pencil, and I would say to him, here, practice, practice. Try to write your name. Little by little by little, I knew that we had the wrong therapist in there. There was a therapist telling me, even with speech therapy, He's not getting it. They all told me that, that he wasn't getting it. And I think the reason that I want to be here and say what I'm saying is that you cannot give or give up on anybody because you just don't know. You know, with those little, those little neurons in there are going to start traveling. And if you've got a guy who's not going to give up and he's going to be bound and determined and he's got a pushy wife, <laughs> and I can honestly tell you that even the doctor told me that six months is about it. Whatever you see here is what you're going to get. We got him out of the house. When he, can, when he was able to move around to the point where I can get him to have John Hines pick him up in a van, take him down to John Hines and do therapy with him, physical and and uh, speech therapy, we got him out of the house. That worked better because you have a, a different type of a therapist coming into a scene like that. And they're all kind of working with each other. So it's, it, it's a different setting. It's not like they're coming into your house and they're, there was something lost in that whole thing. They just didn't have the enthusiasm. I think that a lot of them just felt um, that were coming in, they just felt like, let's get it over with and let me go home. And I think that that's what I was feeling from them. That's why I knew that I had to get him in a, an environment where there were more people around. Um, I really believe that if one therapist wasn't there one day, another therapist came in and worked with him. So we got him in there. We did wonderful. They could see, we could see strides in the <coughs> forward. Um, when the insurance started to run out, you run into another problem. What happens? Because he doesn't know everything he needs to know. We knew a few people here, and then Hunter was then at, you were in Carolina at that time? Alabama. Alabama, and then you got in touch with some of the therapists in the area. Mm -hmm. and. They gave me a letter and they said that this man was looking for people and I called him up and that's how we got associated. And then we came out here probably a year before you even came here. And it worked out just wonderful because we had people that were working with him and they were teaching me at the same time. Because when, when the, the, your instructors would come in and say, this is why you don't want to do this and this is why you want to do that. We were up at the college and the therapist would be watching the uh, students uh, teaching him, which was teaching me to understand about his, his situation. And what happened with him, he started to make his moves forward, not in the first six months, not in the first year. They started the second year. And He's still making moves forward regarding, you know, his mental sta state. The way he walks and moves now is probably going to be for good. We understand that. But
cognitive, he's moving forward constantly. He's doing things now that he couldn't do six months ago or even a month ago. So I say don't ever give up because there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And this year for Christmas and for Valentine's Day, I never thought I'd see it again. I got my first gift with him driving downtown and buying me something and two cards that out of this world. I never thought I'd see it again. All the things I thought I'd never see happen. And he's doing fine. And that's it. One of the things I'm most in about is reading. Stuff. I really enjoy that. So, for example, two a day. This is our house. We get USA. Read that. Any of you have seen this book? Yeah, this is very popular. Now, I read one a day anyway. Kindle, have you any had this? Kindle? Like this, I love this. I read it every day, you know, kind of. Um, boogies, boogies, the kind of book from your house. And I get TV and, and or the, the uh, TV on TV. I watch the football. That's my main passion. <laughs> uh, she talked about a car. We go on to other places. I drive it, you know, wherever we go. Uh, get the gas, fix up the car, uh, the bank. I can, I can sign a bank, you know, kind of thing. Uh, we the groceries. We both do one grocery together. Um, I cut the grass and I'll ride more. <laughs> uh, use the phone. If it greet me anytime. Well, they hear anyone want to reach me, just give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shower, shave, uh, dress myself. Uh, we got a uh, baby dog. You know, we think of the dog. I think of that dog too, everywhere. You know, around and so forth with the dog. Uh, two of my friends I meet in, in, in the morning, in the morning uh, have breakfast. Some of them not now, but in the spring, they play foot, you know, play for golf. You know, I go, I don't play it, but I can you know, go along with them. Uh, I, uh, I lift the morning, so I can lift the weight. You know, we go to the gym, so I can you know, try that every day. I'll get along with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I'm pretty good. You really lift your legs and your arm. But I'm, now I used to, when I, before the accident, I was 172. And I'm 1578. That's what I'm down to. I'm sure I look like him. <laughs> 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 Watch our, you know, what we eat every day. Really watch that stuff too. So that's you know easy for her. But, uh, I have numbers with I can't remember them, so I can't think of the the numbers thing. And for, I can't remember the last name for somebody. It might be the first name. I can't get the last name. So uh, I can't write. The one who should you know, do that, so to speak. So I. I've uh, got some good abilities after a stroke that I had, and good hard, hard work, that type of stuff. I'm, I'm trying to bring that forward. So one thing I want to do is really come back again here and maybe take a few more lessons, so to speak. <laughs>